gardener on duty, ready to cut a path for us. Don't throw your tools down. Well, we said our goodbyes to our friends Colin and Sean from YouTube channel Foxes Afloat, and uh, been quite sad, really, isn't it, friends? Quite. Yeah. Uh, it was sad. There were a few tears shed. I'm not going to say by whom. <laughs> but um, and we're going to be seeing them again in the next few weeks because I think we're going to be leapfrogging a little bit again. Yeah. But we've had such a wonderful time with them, and we've all got, well. I know we certainly have got used to having them nearby. It's uh, it's just like having good neighbours, isn't it? It's just been fabulous. Got too used to the cake. Yeah. Anyway, we're now heading to Chester, which is about just under a three-mile journey. We're going to spend a day maximum there. We did a vlog about Chester <laughs> uh, last year, so have a look. And um, we're just going to cruise on to Elton Moss Boat Builders. We're going to have a few snagging bits and bobs done, nothing major. No. Engine service. I think you've got the idea of having a new shelf built somewhere. New you? shelf built. <laughs> and uh, then we're going to be off back on our normal travels. And we've got nothing then to hold us back. We'll, we'll um, say goodbye to Constanza because she's almost ready for selling. Um, and we can say goodbye to her, goodbye to Elton Moss finally. And then that's it. Well, who knows where we're going to go. We've got all the time in the world, the whole country to explore. And uh, it, it feels like this will really be, be, be uh, the beginning of our new journey, won't it? Yeah, it does. It really does. And it's great to be back on canals again. We've been on river for six weeks and uh, we're loving it. It's oh, just that loving the slow pace. First journey on the canal from Ellesmere Port to where we've been moored overnight was just, just fabulous. You forget how beautiful the peace of quiet is and everything has changed so much in two weeks that we've been away, isn't it? Yeah. Really Elderflowers are now in flower, so elderflower champagne's got to be made. There's new jobs to do, summer jobs to do now. It's, it's all good. Great to hear the bird song again after being in Liverpool for 11 days, wasn't it? In the end, yeah. it's uh, so, we had so seagulls, wonderful. Didn't we? Seagulls, yeah. <laughs> but it's great, great to be back. And today is a lovely hot day. We're gonna have a, it's not a long cruise, is it? About an hour and a half today before we stop. Um, and just chill out time. on Fran? I'm a bit out of my comfort zone actually. Rich found a recipe a couple of weeks ago for a vegan alternative to pulled pork. Um, and we don't usually go for vegan alternatives for meat, we just pre prefer vegetables. But I thought I'd give it a go, um, except I'm not making pulled pork, I'm making bacon out of banana skins. Yes, banana skins. So we don't know if this is going to work. It's a bit like the pickled garlic bud recipe, it's very experimental. So in here I have got three, actually, uh, three, tea, three dessert spoons of soy sauce, one dessert spoon of maple syrup, one teaspoon of smoked paprika and a garlic clove. And apparently I have to scrape the flesh off of the banana skin and the skins are supposed to be really ripe otherwise they're a bit bitter um, so I've got to do this to all of them cut them then into slices a bit like a small rusher of bacon 
and marinate it for at least 10 minutes or up to a couple of hours so I'm going to do that with the rest of the skin I'm going to eat the banana <laughs> and you can come back in half an hour and we'll fry it and just see what happens mm. <laughs> We're going to have the banana bacon in a wrap with some salad and although I've done this recipe before I'm just going to quickly show you how I make the wraps again. We use them as flatbreads for chilli or curry and wraps for lunches, anything really. So again like all my recipes no measurements. I'm just going to have half a bowl of flour and into that I've just got some plain water here and I'm going to put a glug of olive oil it's not critical how much goes in and a wee bit of salt whisk this up and mix it in just enough to give you a wet or well, soft, not a wet dough but a soft dough This is a brilliant recipe for the boat because virtually anything that's a leftover can go in here for lunch. Whether it's chilli or a stir fry, anything, you know, we just wrap it up for lunch the next day. And as I say, we just have it as a, a quick bread to accompany a casserole or a meal. You could put spices and seeds in there if you wanted to as well. That's about right. That's just forming into a dough, as you can see. And what we do now is leave that for about 20 minutes, half an hour, just for everything to incorporate. And I usually just put a plate over the top, turn it over and leave it. So half an hour later, um, I've just sprinkled some flour on the board, split this into two, or you could make more smaller ones if you want to. I'm roll them out quite thin. I'm doing it on the board because I don't want to make my new worktops messy. <laughs> what I need is one of those nice marble slabs, Rich. Oh, really? Yeah, pastry making marble slab, nice and cold. One of those slabs that you drop on your toe when you're washing well, it off. Well, possibly, <laughs> or that, uh, that falls off the, the storage when you're going and banging into a lock, as I do. Um, so look, this is me. This isn't perfectly round. In fact, it's a heart-shaped one, isn't it? Look. Oh, lovely. <laughs> they need to be, I like them a bit thinner than this. You could do them thicker so it's a bit more like a nan bread. I like them thinner. You like them thinner? For a, for a lunchtime wrap. And bigger then, but in that case, you can get curry, more filling in. Like tonight, I like them thicker. Okay. So that's fine. I've got a tiny bit of oil in the pan, just brush it all over. And pop the bread on. And after about three or four minutes, you'll start to find bubbles forming. And that's the point to flip it over. It's so quick and so easy. Um, you can then just wrap them in foil to keep them warm or save them for later. Or just fill them. Or just to eat them, they're delicious. What day is it today? Solstice. Summer solstice. In the past, I used to get really, really excited about summer solstice. Um, I've never gone as far as uh, dancing naked around the trees, but I used to climb up hills to watch the sunset and all sorts of stuff. But these days, it just is a bit depressing, isn't it? <laughs> when the longest day's been, and you know from now on, the dark nights are coming. But um, I still enjoy it, really. We love the winter solstice better, don't we? Because it's only going to get better from then on, isn't it? We're, we're on, oh, is it called Golden Mile? Golden Nook is a mile of moored boats here. We've been here before, but you have to just go and tick over for a mile. And it's a bit tedious, isn't it? But there's some really interesting boats along here, yeah. lovely boat names. But that's why we're going so slowly and there's dogs barking. We're heading to a village called Beeston. Uh, it's got a castle up on a hill that we visited um, last year, yeah. early, early last year. Yeah. Thick mud on the towpath at the time. 
uh, but we've had little rain this year so far in the summer and the towpaths are all nice and dry so looking forward to that. We shot through Chester didn't we? We've yeah. been, um, we've done Chester before, we've moored there for quite a long time in the past so this journey we just literally stopped to shop um, a little bit and there wasn't actually anywhere to moor was there? It was really, really busy, busy. Yeah. Um, towpath is being repaired so it was difficult to stop. So we did get the bus back in and bought some lovely house plants and bits for the boat. But um, we've just kept going, shooting through because we're on our way now to get a few little bits and pieces tidied up on the boat, aren't we? Yeah, we keep telling them that every time we point the camera at us. Oh. We tell them we're going to stop and get the boat well, we sorted. Are. <laughs> we are now, in the next couple of days. <laughs> Imminent. I think we're also going to drizzle a little bit of the marinade over the salad just to give us a little bit of extra flavour. And here is the result, if I can open them, of our pickled garlic buds that we made. They have been tested out on Colin and Sean from Foxes Afloat um, who scrunched up their noses and their eyes and then declared that they really liked them. They're a really strong smell. I can't open yeah, it, Rich. I <laughs> I'm in with pyjamas, by the way. Easy. And you want me to cut these up, Rich, I think, don't you? Yeah, I think I don't want to over garlic. I just want to taste the banana skins as well. So we'll just, just sprinkle these in. A little bit of those in. on there, yeah. Cool. Right, what we're going to do, taste, taste them first before they go in the wrap, I think. Go on then, I'll yep. let you do that, because uh, I'm holding the camera. Well, I'll give you a piece. That's nice and crisp, isn't it? Looks like barbecued bacon. Tell you what, what it top. looks like. Bananas. Barbecued <laughs> banana skin. <laughs> Here we go. It's really nice. I wouldn't say it's like bacon. Would you? No. It's salty. But it's quite sweet and I'm not keen on sweet, barbecuey sweet things. But yeah, it's all right actually. I think in the, in the wrap it's going to be a, a nice tangy addition. Let's have a go. Mm -hmm. Is that really good or is that just for the camera good? <laughs> no, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of barbecue sauces, but that is really somewhat different. It's really nice. I'd do it again. I'd yeah, have it again. Definitely. So the next thing is the banana skin pulled pork recipe, which is slightly different. You have to marinate it for a long, longer while, but we'll try that next. Yeah. Good old banana skins. Yay. Uh, seven out of ten. Yeah, well, it's not bad. Then, it's is not it? bad. No. Here we are at Tilston Lock, beautiful setting for a lock to be. That round building there used to house um, maintenance materials for the canal system. 
And in the latter part of the 19th century and early part of the 20th century, horse-drawn boats called fly boats, which were shaped to be really fast across the water, used to take goods from Ellesmere Port and Birmingham and back at a distance of 80 miles within 24 hours. Imagine that, that, that must have been flying, literally. But an uh, absolutely wonderful place to be. It's a gorgeous setting. Are you working hard, Fran? I'm going without you. Bye. This is a first for us, we're at Bunbury Staircase Lock. Two locks, one goes straight into the next. And uh, there's a boat coming down while we're going up. So uh, never done this before, we've only ever been on our own in uh, Staircase Lock, so give this a go, see what happens. <laughs> 